Okay, the way that I laid my tubing in the ground is I would never recommend anybody do that. Oh, okay. It's a... Uh, it's like excavating a swimming pool. We had piles of dirt everywhere, and it's and we're it's it costs a lot more to pay an excavator to remove all the dirt versus a little bit of the dirt. So what I recommend people do is it, is to dig a four foot wide trench, eight feet deep. Going deep is still important. You either take a, a trench or an excavator, maybe an hour, hour and a half to do that and then they're gone. You paid them, they're out of there, All right? Then, or you can have them help you backfill it if you want. At any rate, you're removing a fraction, maybe an eighth or a tenth of what you'd be removing if you removed the whole dirt. The whole so you learned that from doing it? Right. So what was your aha, aha moment that made you say, I'm not doing it like this again, just because of the amount of time or because of the amount of work or? All those things. But um, I found that it's this very little, for example, you can use six inch tubing instead of four inch tubing. But the return on investment doesn't justify the 50% increase in cost. Can you go below four inch tubing? You could, but you'd have to have a lot more tubing. Okay. Uh, I could have used galvanized steel here, but the return for, on investment isn't, just, doesn't justify the cost for me. So, the return on the investment to dig out the whole area isn't as good as return on investment as simply digging a four foot wide trench eight feet deep. Four foot by? Whatever long you want to make it. Okay, and this is 20? No, this is, how, how long is this one? 40 feet. So, so four by 40 by eight? Four feet wide, eight feet deep. By how long? However long you want to make it. So if I wanted to make one of these, like yours and follow your plan so I didn't have to guess on anything. You're saying four by 40 by eight. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, tell me again. Okay, so the you need a berry in this particular case. I have 7,200 cubic, 7, cubic feet of air, uh, of space. Okay. I need 10% of that in tubing. That all has to fit underground. 720. So whatever, however long you want to make it, it all has to fit underground. Okay. So that's what's going to determine the length. Okay. So in this case, um, if I were going to be putting that tubing inside this greenhouse, I would dig it 40 feet long. I would take my four, five, four pipes of tubing, lay them out on the lawn, put chicken wire or poultry mesh underneath them, and tie those tubings into the poultry mesh so they don't move. That way, they're properly spaced 12 inches on center. Then I walk over here and I simply drop it into the eight foot hole so I don't have to walk, you know, get down into an eight foot deep trench, which is dangerous. I've got my tube sticking out of the ground here. So now I've got 40 times four, I've got 160 feet of tubing underground. I will then take soil, put about a, a six inches of soil on top of that, tamp it down in between the tubes compact that to get the strength of the tubes. Fill it up 18 inches and then roll another 40 foot length of tube over that, which is another 160 feet, right? Okay. So I started at eight feet, and then I, my second layer is at six and a half feet. I tamp that down like I did on the first layer at 18 inches, so I'm 18 inches above the tubes. Roll the tubes back over it, now I've got another 160 feet of tubing down there. So I've got three layers of 160 feet of tubing. Uh, that's however many layer, or whatever the length is. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have at least 10% of your cubic space. And then you float up to the top and you're done. Okay. So as long as your tubing is still below the frost line though, because so that's where want, the cool air. You only or, want to come up to um, about five feet. The five highest feet. you want to come up. You want to be below so the it might be helpful after the trench is dug to mark that five feet line to make sure you don't go above it. Well, no, because math tells you if you start at eight feet, you had 18 inches, you're at six and a half, you had 18 inches, you're at five feet. Okay. So. All right. Then on the outside of that, uh, starting at ground level, I put four inches of styrofoam on the outside to stop that frost from coming in during the winter. 
in the trench. Right, on the outside of the, so inside the trench, on the outside. Right, I saw those panels in your garage in a previous video. Right. Okay. Right. So you basically lined yes, the right. walls of the ditch with that. Exactly. And, and there'll be, a, there's up to a 20 degree difference between the soil temperature outside and the soil temperature on the inside of that styrofoam. Okay. And that will help regulate that soil year round so it's the same temperature. So did I, did I see that you, on your first layer of tubing in the ground, you had stakes in the ground holding them in place? I did, because I had the whole place trenched out. I wouldn't do that if I were doing a four foot wide trench, because I'd have to get down in the trench to do that. That's why I would put it on chicken mesh. Gotcha. I can't picture the chicken I, chicken mesh idea, but I'll watch this video more. And So just lay the chicken mesh on the ground. Okay. Lay four pipes of, two, you know, four tubes of, four, your four pipes on top of that, tie it on so it doesn't move, and the chicken mesh is only there so you can just drop it in the trench and the pipes don't all fall together. Oh, and you're tied in place with zip ties or yeah, anything? anything. Okay. All right. Okay. That's how I would do it. Great.